Hello and welcome. My name is Seshu and I'm part of DVCom support and training team. In this video, I'm going to show it to you how to set up A star P series PABX. Let's go and see what are the topics that I'm going to show it to you in this video. The first one I'm going to show it to you in shell setup. So right now in my lab, we have a P series PABX which is P550. So basically P550 and P560 and P570 it's going to use the same firmware so that once if you know how to set up of one of this PABX it's a similar to the remaining PABXs. So it doesn't require to know about P560 and P570 because it's the same firmware that we are going to deploy it in all these three models. So I'm going to show it to you how to set up your P series PABX if it is a new box it's a new bundle and after that I'm going to show it to you how to update the latest firmware let's go and have a look so first of all before you are going to set up your PABX make sure that you need to connect your LAN port directly to your laptop that's very important guys then after that the default IP address is 192.168.0 5.150 which is slash 24 that's the IP address for your PABX and keep your PC into the same network so that I am going to keep it as 192.168. let's say 5.10 that's your first step then after that you can just open the command prompt and you can check whether you are able to ping or not okay then after that open the browser then type the IP address then you can able to access your PABX but it doesn't have any default username and password guys that's the beauty of that for example if you are familiar with S series PABX which is the old series and by default there is a username is admin and the password is password but P series PABX you can set up according to your requirement whatever username and password you want to keep you can keep it so let's go and set up first so first of all I want to change the IP address for my NIC card. So let's close this one. So open the network settings. And you can see here, this is my LAN, which is my physical connection. Right click on this, go to the properties. Then you can see here, there is a internet protocol version 4, TCP IP version 4 click on properties and specify the IP address 192.168.5.10 then after that you can click ok close and my PABX right now it's directly connected to my laptop on my LAN port now open the command prompt and type the IP address ping 192.168.5.10 5.150 so I can able to access it now open the browser then type the IP address 192.168.5.150 and by default you are going to get a warning you don't worry about it just click on advance then proceed so you can see here there is no username and password this is the place where you are going to set up your PABX if it is a starting if it is a new new bundle so now you can see here the first one is that Ethernet mode so there is a two Ethernet interfaces are there the first one is LAN and second one is the WAN so if you want to use both you can select dual so basically the WAN interface that you are going to use it for SIP trunk and for the general configurations and all we are going to use the LAN interface let's say if I want to select dual you can see here by default it's going to select as a LAN interface and in the down you can see the WAN interface get activate in case if you say single you can see here it's got grayed out and by default it will be the LAN interface but what about the bridge so the bridge is nothing but either you can use the LAN interface or you can use the WAN interface that's your choice so right now I'm going to select as a dual so that I can able to terminate the SIP trunk directly to my PABX. 
that's what the configuration here and after that you can see here the lan the protocol which is going to support ip version 4 and we are going to support ip version 4 and ip version 6 the choice is yours so right now i'm going to use ip version 4 then the static ip address it's always mandatory guys whenever you are going to configure your pabx always recommends that give static ip address don't give any dynamic ip address in case if ip address get changed then phones they are unable to find out and phones are going to unregister it so that's very important for you so right now i'm going to change the ip address as per my requirement i just want to give let's say 10.5 that's the ip address that i want to give you so here i just want to specify the subnet is 192.168.10 that is the subnet which is 10.0 slash 24 and 10.5 i want to keep it the ip address for my pabx and my gateway is 10.1 which is slash 24 is the subnet mask so i don't want to change the subnet mask so i want to give you the gateway so the gateway is 10.1 then after that the preferred dns and alternate dns it's your choice either if you want to keep it your local dns server or if you want to keep it your public dns server the choice is totally yours then after that ip address too this is a secondary ip address if you want to configure the secondary ip address you can go for it now the van protocol because basically when you are going to configure the zip trunk your service provider is going to provide the details so those details you need to configure it here so right now i don't have any details for the zip trunk so that i will configure it later then after that you can click next then the network setting is completed please reboot network for the configuration to take effect are you sure to reboot yes let's go and do that so once you are going to reboot guys what's going to happen your pabx get reboot then after that it's trying to reach with this ip address it doesn't reach with the default private ip which is 5.150 so make sure that you need to change the ip address according to your pabx so let's go and do that so open your network settings and you can change the ip address so i want to keep it as this time 10.10 so make sure that if you want to access your pabx you have to keep your pc into the same network then click ok close now you guys can see here by default it's going like this with this ip address okay so your connection was interrupted why because we got the ip address change that is the reason is not able to so you just wait for some time and meanwhile what you can do whether you are able to reach your pabx or not just open the command prompt and type the ip address ping 192.168.10.5 so i can able to reach and meanwhile you can see here it's automatically refresh and you got it so just click on advance then click on proceed now you can see here the settings has saved successfully then you can click next so the next one is that is trying to reach the public ip address and it's going to check the domain name so right now my pabx is not connected to the internet so you nothing to worry it's just trying to check then after that it will ask you to reconfigure or it's going to ask you some messages you just wait for it yeah so it doesn't find out the public ip address it doesn't find out the domain name no need to worry about it guys and by the way this pabx i have configured previously with one specific domain name and once you configure that specific domain name you cannot change it guys this is what uh, because in upcoming videos i'm going to discuss about it so you don't worry about it so right now my pabx is directly connected to my laptop on my lan interface so that uh, it doesn't have any internet connection so it's checking for the smtp server and all just wait for a few seconds so you guys can see here you want to reconfigure or you want to ignore the issues so i just want to ignore the issues then after that here it's asking you to enter the username and by default they suggested to go with admin 
but in case if you want to change for example i want to keep it as a administrator then the password so i want to keep it the password okay and repeat the password then email address so make sure that you need to give a email address of your it administrator so who is managing this pabx you can give those ip addresses so email addresses i'm sorry for it then you can give seshu at datavoice.com then after that event notification if something went wrong so it's like information events or it's a warning or it's a alert then i want to send it to seshu so do you want to make a call to him no i don't want to make a call email is okay for me then after that you can click next then what's your time zone so the time zone i belongs to dubai so i need to select plus 4 then after that daylight saving time just disable it and synchronize with ntp server so in case if your pabx is getting the internet and if you want to talk to directly to ntp server you can keep it this or else you can set up manually that's your choice guys or else some customers they have it like you know they have their own internal ntp server in case if your pabx can able to reach that ntp server let's say i have a ntp server which is belongs to my same network so that you can specify that ip address that's it but in case if it is not able to reach or maybe your pabx is directly connected with internet it's perfectly fine you can just use it as a pool.ntp.org or else if you say no i don't have a ntp i cannot able to reach then you can set up manual that's your choice so anyway i don't want to do that so i want to keep it synchronized with the ntp server then after that what's the format for your date and time so i want to use the date as day month and year and time format is 12 hours then after that you can click next then after that what's your system prompt language so by default i want to use english then what's the notification email language it's english and device name so i want to give you dvcom pabx then after that tone region i just want to use it as united states that's okay for me then after that you can click next so the overall setting so far i have completed guys you can see here in case if you want to do any changes you just click on this edit button and you can do the changes according to your requirement so so far it's okay for me i don't want to do any changes so you can simply click reboot or in case if you want to reconfigure everything just click on the reconfigure it and you can do it all the changes so i just want to say reboot then the installation is complete please reboot your device for the configuration to take effect you must reboot your device are you sure to reboot now yes so it's going to take two minutes to reboot please wait so meanwhile what i'm going to do now i am going to pause this video and i'll come back to it and meanwhile what i try to do guys i just open the command prompt and i'll keep it continuous ping so that you guys can able to see what's happening behind the scenes so let's open yeah there there you go you can see here my pabx is ready now and i'm going to access with my username which is administrator and the password and you can see here one more interesting thing you can select the language as well guys so if you are belongs to different region and according to your region you can select the language so by default i'm going to use it as english so my username is administrator and select the password type the password is then click login then you can able to log in at first time when you log in you can see this there is a data processing agreement you can just go down and say i have read and agree the above agreement then after that you can click confirm so you can see here there is a nice dashboard it's appearing guys that's the beauty of this you can see here there is a nice dashboard i can see it and first of all i just want to show it to you i want to update my firmware so that's very important guys before you are going to proceed 
to do any configurations it's always recommends that you can check whether you have a latest firmware or not so you can see here when you click on the information here on the top right corner this area just click on the information then you can see here you can able to see the mac address you can see the serial number of your device and ip address and whatever settings you configure it you can see it here and in here you can able to see some interesting information the firmware version so this is you need to focus it guys so the firmware version you guys can see here 37.14.0.26 that's the firmware version but i'm not sure whether it's a latest firmware or not you can just go here to the aster website and by the way from to download the firmware you don't require any kind of agreement from the aster guys that's the beauty of that just type www.aster.com then you can go to the resources and the resources you can select the firmware so once you visit the firmware you can see there is a p series firmware so by default you can see 37.14.0.26 which is the latest firmware so in case if you have a software edition you can just download this that's the beauty of that so there is iso image so you can download it directly so in case if you are not updated and you can just download the bin file or you can download the zip file that's your choice so anyway thank you so much then you can see 37.40.0.26 this is the latest firmware guys so which means this pabx is updated automatically okay so previously maybe uh, one of my partner he has taken for the demo and he updated this pabx it's okay for me in case if you want to update you just come here and you can download this firmware directly just go to the resource and click on the firmware then after that you can see here this is the your latest firmware you can download the bin file so to update that you can just go to the maintenance you can see guys it's very interesting especially there is no confuse and by seeing these options if you are a bit familiar about pabx how to configure it then you can by seeing this you can able to understand you can see extensions and trunk it's related to your extensions contacts auto provision call control call features messaging so right now i want to do to upgrade the firmware so that you need to go to the maintenance then in the maintenance section you can just click on the upgrade so here you can see guys it's very straightforward and one more interesting thing is that as i told you if your pabx is getting internet let's say that 192.168.10 network it's having a internet you can just click on the check for the new firmware and directly your pabx talk to the aster server globally secured it's a secured communication guys by the way and it's going to check is there any latest firmware is available or not and second one is that manual upgrade you can download the firmware click on the browse then select the file and click on upgrade and also if you want to check the notify like for example if you want to check the updates then you can just select daily at what time you want to check it and if you want automatically update the installation and you can do it as well it's purely your choice guys and if you want to take the backup or restore you can do it from here if you want to reboot the pabx you can do it from here in case if you want to reset the pabx you can do it from here if you want to troubleshoot your pabx you can do it from here so that's the beauty of your a star guys because why i'm trying to explain to you these are all these things it's very quite interesting you can see here from the maintenance window you can do all the maintenance related tasks that's the beauty of that so this is what how you are going to set up your initial setup of your pabx and uh, if you want to download the firmware you can directly go to the aster website from resource you can directly go to the firmware and download it as well so i hope this has been informative and i would like to thank you and uh, in case if you have a sales related enquiries you can drop an email sales@datawise.com if it is a support you can drop an email support@datawise.com thank you